Hi, and welcome to another tutorial on coding and game design in Wolf.js. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a simple uh, Apple Catcher game using Wolf.js. Um, and I'll just show you an example here of one I created earlier. So we have um, just a blue sky background. Um, we have a green bar that moves left and right. And so it follows the mouse as we move left and right. And when we click to start this game, um, these red apples fall, which are just circles. And we need to move the bar left and right to catch the apples. And you can see we've got a score and we've also got a high score here. Um, and when the game ends, you can click it to start playing again. Um, and so as the score um, becomes greater than the high score, the high score will um, be updated. Um, and this high score is being stored in the local storage on the computer. Uh, the other thing you might notice is that the apples start falling at a faster rate, so the speed picks up as the game um, progresses. So what's different from the previous game, a few new things that we'll look at is uh, we'll be working with high score, we'll be working with mouse inputs, so moving, mouse, uh, moving the mouse around the screen um, to make other things move, uh, or following the mouse, uh, we'll be working with mouse clicks, and um, will uh, also be um, making objects move on their own. So the apples will be falling uh, randomly from different um, positions across the screen, falling from the top um, and moving on their own and picking up speed over time. Okay, so to start with, um, we can create a new project. So you can go to wolfjs.com, start a new project, um, save it straight away. So I've already saved this and uh, give it a name. And what I'm going to do is change my backdrop image. So I have set backdrop URL here. You can use your own backdrop image um, here. Just copy and paste the link in between these um, brackets and quotes. Or if you want, you can say set backdrop color and um, specify a color that you want to use for the backdrop. But I already have an image I'm going to use. So I'll just uh, put in the link to that here. And it's just a uh, PNG image of a blue sky background with clouds. Okay, and that's it. Okay, next thing we need to do is this game is going to be storing, um, recording the score and it'll also be storing the high score. So we can create two variables here. First one, I'll say var to create a new variable and we'll call it high score. And the high score is going to, um, we're going to have the variable high score which is used during gameplay, but we're also going to store the high score in the computer's local storage so that it's still there even when we're not playing the game. And if we leave the game and come back, our high score will still um, be there. So var high score equals, so all right. I'll say equals local storage. I might just close this tab here just to make some more room var high score equals local storage dot get item and we need to give it a unique name that it will have uh, on this computer so I'm just going to say user high score so the variable high score is used within the game but we're also kind of storing a variable on the computer called user high score so it needs to be unique and um, when we come back and play this game um, when we load the high score into um, the game we'll check whether there's already a high score in the user's local storage under the name user high score. Um, and if so, we'll, we'll get that um, high score and put it into the game. But if there's not, so if the player hasn't um, played this game before, they've never, they've never played it um, and they don't have a high score, then what we'll do is we'll just set the high score to zero at the start of the game. So we'll say or, which is represented by two vertical bars, so or zero. And if you're looking for two, those that vertical bar character, um, you usually just hold shift backslash. And that's where it should be on your keyboard. Okay, so we're saying create a variable called high score. If we have the user high score in local storage, then get it. Uh, otherwise, or just set the high score to zero if we can't find a high score already. Okay. Um, the next variable we can create is just the score variable. We'll keep track of the score during the game. And now what we can do is create some text that will display um, the, uh, the score and the high score on the screen. So say var um, 
high score text equals new text. Okay, and inside those brackets, we'll add all the information about the text. So, so text uh, high score with a colon and a space, and then it will display at the end there a high score variable, just like that. And you can see it already says 21 there next to high score, and that's because this game here, the one that I've already created, has a high score of 21, which is stored in user high score in local storage. So it's actually getting it from there. Um, but we can set that back to zero if we want to. Um, so high score, we'll display the high score. Uh, we'll set the X position. So uh, we'll say something like min X, so move all the way to the left side of the screen. Um, we'll add on a little bit, we'll say plus 20. Okay, um, now it's still cut off the edge of the screen, but what we can do is um, we can align that text. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. So we'll set the Y position as well to max Y minus 20. Um, we can change the size to 24. We can change the color to something like maybe yellow. Um, we can change the font family as well. So font family is a type of font that we can use. We can use um, something like Arial, um, or just to be fun, we could try terrible font, Comic Sans and S. Um, and we might as well leave that there. Okay, next thing we can do is change the text alignment. So say text align, and in quotes, left. Okay, so now our high score is there in the top left corner. Um, what we can do now is we can add the score text. Um, so we might as well just copy and paste this. Okay, but instead of calling it high score text, we'll call it score text. And instead of saying high score, we'll say score and display the score value instead of the uh, high score value. Okay, but at the moment you can see that text is uh, overlapping. So we need to move it over a little bit. Um, and actually what we'll do is we'll set the X position to zero. So it's in the center of the screen. Um, and we'll move it down to Y position 60. Um, make the size a little bit bigger, could be size 40. Um, color, pick something else like orange. Uh, and we'll align that to center. Okay, so we've got a score in the in the middle there. Um, but what we can also do is um, we can uh, create a game over message and uh, we can also create a play again message. So when the game ends, we can say game over and click anywhere to play again. Okay, so uh, to do that, we'll just create a new text. We'll say bar game over text equals new text. Okay, I'll say the text will be game over, x position 0, y position 10, uh, we'll make that size 45, and color can be red. Okay, and we won't bother changing the font at all, just uh, leave that font family the same. Okay, and lastly we can copy that just paste it here and we can call this one uh, play again text and this can say something like uh, click anywhere to play again because we'll just detect if there's a mouse click on the screen and if so we'll start the game again. X position could be t uh, zero. Y will move it down a little bit so say something like minus 30 and that's a bit big so we can change the size to something like 20 and if we want, we can also change the color there. Okay, so that's what we'll display uh, at the end of the game, but we don't want it to display at the start, so we can hide those two text objects by saying game over text dot hide. Oops, didn't need to put a number in there. Game over text dot hide and uh, play again text dot hide. Okay, so now we just have the high score and the score there in the middle.
All right, um, now what we can do is create the actual game objects, so the apple and the player. Now, uh, in the previous tutorial where we uh, made the Catch the Monster game, the sprites were used for images, so we used an image for the player and an image for the enemy. Um, and you can do that um, here as well. If you want to um, do that, you can say var apple equals new image and var player equals new image. Um, but just to show how to create shapes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just use a circle for the apple and a rectangle for the player. Okay, so I'll say var apple to create the apple variable, uh, apple sprite, and this will be a new circle, so we can say equals new circle. And inside the brackets here, just like we do for when we're creating a new image or when we're creating new text, we add all the information about the circle. So the kind of information we'll need is the radius, which we can just set to um, something like 10, but you can see if we change the radius there, it makes the circle, um, changes the size of the circle. But let's make the radius 10 so the apple's not too big. Uh, we'll change the color to red, so it's a red apple. Um, we'll set the X position to be a random position. So uh, we can say random and what we can do is so when the apple falls from the top it will fall from a random um, position on the x-axis between the left side of the screen and the right side of the screen. Um, now we could say something like make x a random position between uh, min x and max x. The problem with that though is um, that if this is played on a very big screen and the player is quite small it might be hard to move the player back and forth or left and right to catch the apple in time, especially as it picks up speed. So what we can just say is make it fall within a specific range. Um, so we could say make it fall between maybe minus 160 and 160 on the x-axis. So um, it'll be anywhere between about here and here. Okay, and the y position, we can set to be max y, so it will fall from right up the top, but we'll move it down just a little bit. So say y max y minus 50. I forgot to put a comma at the end of that other line. So it's going to fall from this height here. So random position across the screen, but falling from this height. You can make it fall from right at the top if you want, but I just didn't want it to be falling over the um, high score text or anything like that. Okay, um, so that's the apple. We can create the player as well, so say var player equals, and this time we're creating a new rectangle. And in the brackets we can add the information about the rectangle. So a rectangle doesn't have a radius, we're going to have to specify the um, width and height instead. So we'll say width 40, height 20. Okay, so now we have a rectangle here, and you can change the height of that if you like. Um, y position, so it's going to be right down the bottom, so you can say min y, but then move it up a little bit. So min y plus 20, uh, and x position can be 0, so it starts off in the center. And we'll change the color to something like green. Okay. Alright, so this is our player, oh sorry, this is our player down here, and this is the apple up here. Okay. Um, that's it for now. What we'll do in the next tutorial is set the speed that the apple will fall and we'll start um, moving the player around with the mouse and start making the apple fall and um, collect points. That's it for this tutorial though. Thanks for watching.